what should you look for in a prenatal vitamin? Hi friends, I am Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI, so I'm a fertility doctor. And today I'm gonna to be breaking down what is important to have in a prenatal vitamin. I actually get asked this question all the time because I recommend every patient who is trying to get pregnant is on a prenatal. And everybody says, well, which one is the best? Tell me the best one and I will take it. But the truth is vitamin supplements are not FDA regulated. So that's very interesting and they can really put in them whatever they want and make different claims. So I do think it is important to know what ingredients you're actually looking for. The short answer when I answer this question is, well, whatever vitamin you will consistently take, that is the best one. Because we know that not everybody's really compliant with vitamins. They can cause constipation or nausea. And so if there is one that you like the taste of it, the packaging, it's easier to take, that is going to be a good one. Then you wanna look at what is inside. This channel exists to provide you facts about your body, your health, your fertility. And I would love it if you would subscribe to follow along and help share our message with more people. All right, so let's dive into just basic gummy vitamins versus pills that you have to swallow or even things that you have to add into your drink because there are a lot of new prenatals out there. The real answer is there's not one form of vitamin that is better than other forms. And so that is good news. You can do whatever you want. It is important to know that gummy prenatals do not have iron. Iron can't be made in a gummy form. So if you take a gummy prenatal, that's fine and great. Just know that at least in that second trimester, you're going to need to take an extra iron pill. Well, what's the deal with iron? Iron is really important because your blood volume is expanding in pregnancy, but it also can constipate you. And so a lot of times if you just start taking a brand new prenatal and you might get constipated, that can be something that causes you to not be compliant with the prenatal. So if that's the case, or you get constipated easily, a stool softener like Colace, which is over the counter, in addition to having a diet full of lots of fiber and drinking a lot of water, can really help put constipation aside. Personally, that's what I did. I took a prenatal, a gummy prenatal, my whole pregnancies, and then I added in an iron pill in the second trimester. So I'm gonna be breaking down basic nutrients and giving you some information. So the first one is going to be folic acid. And I will tell you that even in residency, when I worked at a very low income hospital, we took care of a lot of people who didn't have resources. We prescribed and recommended just folic acid alone. It is really inexpensive and very easy to take with few side effects. And it is probably the single most important nutrient in all of the prenatal vitamins. The recommendation is to take a prenatal vitamin that has at least 400 micrograms of folic acid. Now, Folic acid has to be metabolized in the body to an active form of folate, which can also be found in different types of food, like leafy greens are a really well-known source, in addition to a lot of your fortified foods, like your breads, pastas, and cereals. So what we do know is that if you don't eat many greens and vegetables, and you are gluten-free perhaps, you might not be exposed to a lot of folate that is into foods. And this is where taking a supplement is very important. 400 micrograms of folic acid has been proven to prevent a certain type of birth defect called a neural tube defect. Now a neural tube defect is a variety of different things. Your spinal cord is actually formed as a long tube. Think of it like a flat sheet of paper and it folds upon itself to create the spinal cord and then the brain. And so failure of allowing it to fold in on itself is what a neural tube defect is. And this can cause spinal bifida, which is where parts of your spinal cord are not completely developed or they're exposed to the outside of your body can also cause different brain defects, including anencephaly or lack of an entire brain. Very serious birth defects. So folic acid, 400 micrograms of supplementation a day has been proven to prevent this. And that is why folic acid is so important. Folic acid is also just really important in cell division and metabolism. So it's important for growth of a baby and growth of a placenta. So ultimately it's just a nutrient that you need. So there's been some discussion about methylfolate and I know this leads to a lot of confusion. Methylfolate is a downstream metabolite of folic acid. There's concern that some people may have trouble processing folic acid and that methylfolate may be beneficial. Studies have shown that methylfolate has good bioavailability, meaning when you take methylfolate versus folic acid, you have good levels in your bloodstream of some of the nutrients that we check. So that's excellent. However, no study has shown harm with methylfolate, 
but no study has shown that methylfolate supplementation instead of folic acid can prevent neural tube defects. And I don't know that we're going to have that study. And I think that's an important thing to realize. If I have a vitamin that is cheap and easy and been proven to prevent a birth defect, am I now going to do a randomized controlled trial and give half of the people lack of exposure to that nutrient and risk a birth defect? That is very, very unlikely to ever happen. So maybe it will, and we can have the question answered. Personally, I doubt there's a difference, right? They're really both shown to be bioactive. However, because we don't know, and the consequence is so severe, I recommend that everybody takes folic acid. I know that you will see prenatal vitamin companies touting how wonderful methylfolate is, and I take both personally, and I think that that is the easiest solution if you want to be the safest. Folic acid is what is shown to prevent birth defects, and so if you are taking a vitamin and you like it because of its flavor or how easy it is or that it comes in packets and you're compliant with it, great, but it has methylfolate, you should take an additional supplement of folic acid. All right, another nutrient that's really important is vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is very important for the nervous system and for red blood cell formation. So if you have vitamin B12 deficiency, you can get something called peripheral neuropathy so that you don't have sensation in your hands and your feet. You can also get a certain type of anemia. B12 is found in a lot of animal-based products like meat, poultry, fish. And if you are not exposed to those, so if you are a vegan or a vegetarian, you should definitely take more B12. If you avoid animal products, then I recommend you take at least three micrograms of vitamin B12. Another nutrient that's really important in your prenatal vitamin is another type of B vitamin called vitamin B6. And this helps you prevent you from having anemia and also very important for cell growth. It helps your body use up the nutrients that you get from your diet. Now B6 is found in more foods, but it is also found in all of the animal products. And then in some like fruits like bananas and then in cereals and grain. So it is something that you're much less likely to have a deficiency of. Vitamin D is another big one. One that's gotten a lot of attention. A lot of fertility studies have shown that people who are vitamin D deficient have lower levels of success with a variety of fertility treatments. So we know vitamin D is really important in the reproductive process. What it does for a baby is it does help with bone growth and development as you're pregnant. And it's also very important for skin and eyes. So vitamin D is very important for growing. The minimum recommendation is about 600 international units, and that's if you have normal vitamin D levels. So if your vitamin D is low, then I usually recommend more than that. So that's something you might want to talk to your doctor about or see if they have checked or not. Vitamin D can be found from sunlight, and so part of the thought is that we're seeing more deficiency as we spend more time indoors or on screens, and that's why I recommend a supplement for everybody. Vitamin A is really important for healthy eyesight. It's one of those nutrients that's really, really important for your eyes. And this can be found from carrots, as we always know, like your orange vegetables and some of your green vegetables. So carrots, sweet potato, leafy greens, and other greens. So those are all really great. Vitamin A is also important in bone growth, which is something you may not know. Now you can have too much vitamin A. So toxic levels of vitamin A can actually be known to be associated with birth defects. The level of vitamin A that causes birth defects is about 10,000 international units or 10 times the upper end that you would ever find in a supplement. So it is definitely a reason why we don't just consume lots of supplements at one time and that there's a limit. So vitamin A is one of those that you need, but too much can be a bad thing. Choline is something that is very important for the baby's brain and nervous system development. Prior prenatals did not always have choline and our MFM or high-risk OB colleagues have come out clearly and said that choline is very important. It can be found in some food sources such as milk, beef liver, eggs, soy products, but you can also get it in most prenatals should have choline in it, at least 450 milligrams. Iodine is also really important for brain development and thyroid development. You need at least 220 milligrams. Most prenatals should have this. Iodine is also found in like iodized table salt. So most salt you consume has it in there. Although I will say things like pink Himalayan salt or fancy salts actually may not be iodinized. So if you have a fancy salt that you crush up and put on your food, you actually may be getting less iodine. So make sure your vitamin has it in it. But then a lot of other products such as dairy products and meat products and breads also have iodine either in them or supplemented. We recommend at least a thousand milligrams of calcium in a prenatal. Calcium, I think everybody knows, is good for bone growth and development. You can find calcium in all of your dairy products like milk, cheese, yogurt. It's also fortified into a lot of your plant-based milks like almond milk, soy milk, and then calcium naturally is in a lot of dark leafy grains. 
And then we're talking about iron. So as I said earlier, iron is really important to prevent an anemia. Iron doesn't really need to be consumed until the second trimester and on of pregnancy because your blood volume is relatively stable beforehand. Iron is what is in your red blood cells that allow oxygen to bind and be delivered to your different organs. So iron is really essential. And this is why when you are anemic and you're not able to have enough oxygen, you can get some really terrible side effects. Iron can be found most notably in meats, right? Everybody thinks that since I'm vegan, I must be iron deficient. However, iron is also very, very high in your leafy greens. When you look at the iron level in 100 grams of spinach or 100 grams of red meat, you're going to see iron levels of 2.7 milligrams versus 2.6 milligrams. So having a hunk of spinach, a lot of salads, putting spinach in smoothies, you can definitely not be iron deficient if you are a vegan or a vegetarian. So plant-based sources are really great for iron. Those are the basics for a prenatal. I know that sounds like a lot. You will find that most prenatals have all of those in there. The other thing that I often like to see are omega-3 fatty acids. These are EPA and DHA, and they can be very helpful for brain development. So when you look at your prenatal, what you're really looking for, or I would say some of the keys that they don't all have, is they don't all have the right type of folic acid, they don't all have choline, they don't all have omega-3 fatty acids, and they don't all have iron. You can judge based on what trimester you are or if you're willing to take an extra supplement. If it's a gummy vitamin and that's what you like, then take some iron when you get into the second trimester. If you love the lemony taste or the tiny little package but it has methylfolate, I recommend you add on an additional pill of folic acid. Hope this helped. As always, love it if you subscribe to the channel and support us. You can find more information on the As Woman podcast or also follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.